Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked, the series where I talk about every single book on my shelf because no one can stop me. Today I'm going to be talking about the first of two Julie C. Dow books on my shelf, Forest of a Thousand Lanterns. Some quick disclaimers before we start, I bought this book myself, it was actually in a fairy loot box way back when it originally came out quite some time ago now, and all opinions are my own. As ever, I will be keeping this review spoiler free, but if you do want to go into this book knowing absolutely nothing, click away now. I will also say here that I have read the sequel to this book, Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix, but I wasn't such a fan of it and I don't still have a copy and I honestly can't remember much of what happened whereas I have reread this so I'm going to keep this focused on Forest of a Thousand Lanterns and I will also be talking about the kind of spin-off book Song of the Crimson Flower but that will be next week's video assuming nothing goes terribly wrong. This is a YA fantasy book from 2017 so of course it's a retelling. That may be a bit mean but honestly all I remember about those kind of two years is just being in a sea of YA fantasy retellings everything I read was in some way a retelling of something that but with a twist was everything I read. Obviously this is a retelling I enjoyed, I've kept it on my shelf since then, but I will say that you have to understand my liking of it in the context of there were a lot of other retellings happening at the same time. Judy C. Dow is a Vietnamese American author who's currently based in New England. Her latest series started in 2020 with The Mirror Broken, which I have not read yet, I have not heard about it, maybe I will pick it up. We don't know. So this is a Wicked Queen retelling, very specifically the Wicked Queen from Snow White. This particular retelling is East Asian inspired following Shi Feng, who the stars predict is going to be Empress one day. But Shi Feng, despite her beauty and her general amazingness at life, in order to have that destiny she has to embrace the darkness that is steadily growing within her. And the story sort of starts with her and the boy that she potentially loves heading off to the Imperial Palace. The biggest selling point for this book, the strongest aspect of this book in my opinion, is that it takes a retelling from a villain's perspective and allows the villain to be villainous. Often I find in retellings, especially retellings where they have the main character be the villain, you either get a completely non-villainous main character or a character who does bad things but throughout the book it's made very clear well it wasn't their fault they were given those beans and persuaded them to trade a moment no so i don't think there's a problem with that kind of more wicked approach but it is very refreshing to read a book where you have a main character who given the choice between the obvious fairy tale good choice and choosing power for example in this case and they choose power. We don't often get that and it was a really refreshing take, particularly in that sea of retellings. I'm not suggesting that it's a better narrative and I'm not suggesting that murder your way to power is necessarily immoral we want to be giving young women, but it's much better than settle for the nice farm boy, you don't need to be queen. Some people might want that. I felt like the setting was really well established in this book. The majority of the book takes place within the palace and I think that Judy C. Dow really does a great job of emphasising the opulence of the palace, especially in contrast to where we start the book in Shi Feng's hometown. And I think that the creation of these opulent places and the clothes and the details and the furnishings is really well done. I think she also does a really good job of cra capturing the claustrophobia of that environment and the kind of the fact that the things that are happening there affect people across this whole country but actually the power struggles are very small scale and it's all very passive aggressive at times. Uh, I think that that claustrophobia and that intenseness of the environment is really well captured. Alongside that there is really good atmosphere in this book. You know me, it's a thing that I love, but what I think works well is that as the more fantasy elements of this story start to creep in, the creep factor really escalates and you get some very quite dark moments within this story which I definitely appreciated. Okay, on to some of the cons and this may be very specific to me but hey it's my channel, let's get into it. So I first read this in 2018, I looked it up, and it was among this sea of retellings to the point where I had a tag on my blog that was the year of all the retellings because I read so many of them. I loved this book, I kept recommending it, I held it up as my beacon as to what a YA fantasy retelling could and should be. Not that I would say anything has to be anything, but you know what I mean. And I reread it in 2020 and I didn't love it as much. I think part of it was that on a reread I definitely noticed more that a lot of the things that I had taken as what an empowering wonderful moment felt much more well you're only doing that because of the thing that this person said so where is your agency in this decision but I do think this is just one of those stories that hits home harder when it's your first time reading it and everything is very new and fresh and I think the fact that it was in the context of so many other really cookie cutter retellings the fact that this one felt even slightly different 
was a really significant factor in my enjoyment of it. So when you take it out of that context, when I haven't read as many retellings of late, when I haven't been reading as much YA, it doesn't hit quite as hard. If you're not much of a rereader, I don't think that would be an issue. If you just want to read this once, if you wanted to get it from the library, whatever, I think you'd be fine. But my criteria for holding on to a book is that I want to read it again and I don't know if I want to read this again. Oh and let's not discount that you know my reading tastes have changed a fair bit since 2018. It's been a while. I was thinking about things to compare this to as I usually do in these videos and I was thinking about retellings that I enjoyed that came out around about that time. To Kill a Kingdom is one of them that's been in this series of Overbooked. I wondered about The Graces by Laura Eve which has another kind of villainous element to it that's really interestingly explored. And I also wondered about Fireheart Tiger by Aliette de Bodard for a more recent release. That's a novella, it's also Vietnamese inspired, and it also deals with this kind of struggle for power kind of thing. It's a very different story but there's different elements in there that might be interesting to you. Should you read this? Final thoughts. I would say if this is your vibe, if this is the kind of thing that you think you're gonna like, you will enjoy this. I think it's a very good retelling, it's very solid. As I say, I think I went in with probably two high expectations that I had set. So I'd say go in knowing that it is a slightly different retelling, it has some really strong elements. If I'd been making this video a year ago without having reread it, I would probably be saying, oh, it'll blow your mind, it's the most amazing thing ever. And I don't feel that way anymore. But also, I'm obviously saying that with the benefit of hindsight, and maybe if you read this for the first time, it would blow your mind. I don't know. As I say, next week we are going to talk about the spin-off book from this series. I'm probably going to talk about it in five minutes, to be honest, but for you it will come out next week. I will have more thoughts on that then, but if you have any books you would like to recommend to me, any retellings that you think really, really do something different, I would be very interested to know, because as much as I complain about the quantity of them, I do love a retelling. While you're down there commenting, do follow me on all of my social media, and be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. It would make me feel loved and appreciated. That's all from me, and I will see you in the next one. It's got a piece of bloopers now. I love this book. I kept recommending it, I have, and I don't read as much way up, way a. As I say, next week we are going to talk about the spin-off, but what? Don't kick your camera, Judith.